you're all well. Today is Wednesday the 10th I believe of April. Yes it is. And it's actually a bit later this morning. It's quarter past nine before I'm starting this vlog because I've had a, one of those mornings that has just been really bitty and nothing's gone to plan. You know what it's like? I think it's because I woke up late. I didn't wake up until 10 past seven um, and it's the first long lie I've had since Brooke stopped school two and a bit weeks ago um but it throws me off just that extra half hour in bed it's like oh what am i doing but i was really tired last night i actually had about 11 hours sleep i was, must have been sleeping by about half eight something like that i really needed it anyway you don't need to know all that do you so yeah this morning the just as i was going in the shower my mum messaged to say that her coffee machine had blown up <laughs> Thankfully the cabin's still standing, I don't think it was a big blow up, but it no worky. So, can we order another one? So I was back and forward with her, you know, trying to figure out what one she wanted and all the rest of it. So I got all that sorted. And then, apologies in advance, I'm about to rant. I had to write a very not nice email to Mobile Phones Direct. You may remember I ordered a phone for Brooke on Easter Monday, so the 1st of April. I still haven't got it nine days later and it was meant to be here by Thursday so on Thursday I went onto the website to have a look and it st still said the order was pending I'm like I paid a £60 deposit like £60 up front on Monday why is this order pending so I emailed them and they said that there was a problem with the their system that talks to O2 because obviously they, they don't work for a specific um, provider they just do the mobiles and then you know they do O2 and 3 I would never ever 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 in a million years go back to 3 and um, that sort of thing so apparently there was a problem with their system talking to the O2 system and it was going to be sorted out they had somebody working on it blah 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 so by the next day I still hadn't heard anything and I'm like this is a bit strange so I emailed them again and this time I was told that it was a problem with their credit checking system. Now, I hadn't been told that I, I would be getting a credit check. I assumed that I would because it's a contract, but I hadn't been told that I would be. But apparently that is what the problem was. Um, please bear with us, it will be fixed soon. We're working on it around the clock. That was Friday. This is now Wednesday and I've still not heard anything. So I emailed them because... The reason we went with them is they're part of AO. Hey, oh, let's go. And we've had loads of stuff from AO. We've had brilliant service. We've never had an issue. So when I saw that, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to go for it because the prices were really good. And at first I thought, is it a scam? Um, and then I thought, no, they're part of AO. It's fine. And even this morning, I did go on to Trustpilot and there's not a lot of negative reviews. So I don't know what's going on. But I basically messaged them this morning and said, I'm really disappointed with the service. I thought it might be a scam, but I went with it because it was part of EO. Now it's looking like it is a scam. Give me my £60 back ASAP. Cancel my order or else I'm going on to Trustpilot and leave a one-star review both for mobile phones direct and for EO because if they're going to be associated with a company that acts like this, they have to take the consequences. So... I've not heard anything since, but we will wait and see what happens. It's just, it's really frustrating. To be honest, I was kind of glad that it wasn't here before Brooke went to cadet camp because although the phone that she's got just now is on its last legs, it is still working. And I really didn't want her taking a brand new iPhone away to cadet camp because that's just asking for trouble. So I was quite happy, but I want it to be here for her coming back. It's, it's just not fair. So I'm going to have to go on and have a look at other deals and see if I can get another deal for her. Um, yeah, because it's a shame. She was really excited about getting it on the Monday. And then when we couldn't, it was it took a bit of consoling because it's, it's not as easy as saying, look, you can't get it today. You know, you just need to move on. Because when someone's got autism, they, they can't, they don't think like that. You know, they, they've got it in their head, they're getting it then. And if they don't get it then, it's really upsetting. So, 
I managed to get around to, right, it'll be here on Thursday. And then when it wasn't here on Thursday, I'm like, here we go again. So I've not said anything to her now. We'll wait and see what happens. But I hope I get something for her by the time she comes back on Sunday. We will see. Even, I'm not going to get a chance to go into a no-to shop and um, look at getting her a contract there. We should have just done that when we were in Brayhead on Monday. Anyway, that's... <sighs> Enough havering about phones and rants and all the rest of it. Let's look forward to today. Uh, to be honest, I've not got an awful lot on. I just wanted to vlog and talk to you all. Finally, remember a very big thank you to Sheila Wolf who bought me coffees after me talking about it the other day. Thank you, Sheila. I really do appreciate it. Um, there's still the money's still not through. I think there is an issue with trying to buy a coffee from America because the lovely Sheila is from America and it has said that there's an issue but it's not said what so it's not your fault Sheila um, I'm trying to figure out with them what the issue is and I think it is because it just doesn't seem to like people from outside the UK buying it has anybody else had that experience let me know if you're in the US have you managed to buy a coffee for somebody in the UK I don't know I don't know anyway thank you so much for that Sheila will get it sorted out one way or another and the thought was amazing as well so thank you like I said the buy me a coffee link is always in my description of videos I'm not for one minute saying that you have to use it but it's there if anybody wants to yeah so back to today I have been doing some resin of course I have and I have unloaded it but I'm wanting to do some little touches to it all before I show you so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you later on other than that I don't know what I'm going to do I've got so much going on Granny Annie is wanting to buy me a 3d printer now ages ago I had thought about a 3d printer because I see a lot of people use them to make objects that they then use to make resin molds with and I thought oh what a great idea and a lot of the craft fairs that I was at at Christmas People were selling 3D printed items and they were amazing and it did put that thought in my head and then I thought Fiona you've got enough going on just now um, I'm still trying to figure out my laser engraving machine that I got in January and I've got no space for it now I've got two crickets I've got a heat press I've got a um, sublimation printer I've got my engraver I've got everything everywhere so I thought no don't worry about it but where Granny Annie does her dan line dancing classes on a Tuesday, there's a guy been going that has been taking in the 3D things that he's made. And of course, that's got Granny Annie set on. Oh, think of what we could do for my tables at Christmas if we got a 3D printer. And she's determined to get me one. And I love the idea of it. But I'm like, I've got enough going on just now. I still want to suss out my engraving machine and things before I get anything else. And... I have just got a different kit from BB Craft. You'll see that's going up tonight. So I've got a, a string art kit that I want to try from that. Plus I've got a different kit. Now, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know if it says in here. This is it anyway. I got it from eBay because I saw it on Facebook. Of course I did. I saw it on Facebook. Is it a Cloisone kit? Cloisone kit? I don't know, I'll need to look on Google to see how to pronounce it. And I had to have it. It's basically, it's like a picture, but you use wire to outline the picture. And then once that's all done, you fill it in with, it looks like a sort of enamel type paint type thing. And it just looks so cool. So I've got that to try as well. And I'm thinking, God, I've got all that going on. I don't need a 3D printer right now, but I kind of want it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, always like to try something new. I was the same when I was working. You know, I really enjoyed my job, but then I thought, oh, I quite fancy doing something new. Yeah, I get bored. I don't get bored. I just, I get an idea in my head and I want to go with it. So let me know if any of you out there have got a 3D printer or are thinking about getting a, a 3D printer. So yeah, I've got all that going through my head. So that's what I've been doing this morning. And uh, it's quarter past nine and I've not even got this vlog started. So anyway, I've now been havering for 10 minutes. So I'm going to head off. I'm going to um, sort these bits of resin that I have unloaded and then I'll show you them. Oh, the other thing, I've got the bedding in the machine 
and I keep meaning to show you what I do to keep all my bedding together. Probably everybody does it. I saw it on a vlog years ago and I thought, oh, great idea, and I do it all the time now. But it was Cheryl from the Stevens and Gretsch family was going through their airing cupboard and matching up all the duvet sets. And I was like, oh, I'll show you what I do to keep them together. And that way you don't have the, the task of, right, that duvet cover goes with, what, where's the pillow slips for that? And what sheet do we use? So I'll show you that later as well. Probably everybody knows it, but I like to give wee tips here and there. Don't know what's come over me with cleaning recently, giving oven cleaning tips and duvet tips and things. That's not me. <laughs> Maybe I'm growing up. I'm almost 49 now. It's time to grow up. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to get on with this and I'll come back to you later. So it's now 10 to 12. The last couple of hours have flown by. I have been having fun playing with some UV resin to finish off the little bits and pieces that I was talking about. So I'm going to turn you around and like. Now most of what I was finishing off was the Disney mould, the little sort of mini and Mickey mould that I got in a recent Timu haul. So I'll show you. These are earrings. Aren't they cute? They're very, very cute. They're not perfect. There's a couple of little holes in them, but it's the first time that I've done it. I just wanted to see how they turned out. So yeah, I like them. Now the popcorn ones, I had a bit of an issue. You can't really see the Mickey heads. What I had done was the Mickey heads in the popcorn, I had done yellow. But then when I poured in the gold glitter, it kind of lost the Mickey heads. So I went in with black just to try to highlight them a bit. But now it just looks like burnt popcorn. <laughs> so I'll do it again, but I would probably do it the other way around. I would do gold in the Mickey heads and um, yellow in the actual popcorn. But I quite like the red. That's a UV glitter resin uh, that I've done the red in. And I like the fact... Whoa, I like that it's got the little Mickey cut out on it. So yeah, they're meant to be rings as well. They're very cute. Next, we have the little glasses, the Minnie Mouse glasses, and these have little mini bows inside them. And you can't see the colour that great, but it's a sort of pearlescent white that's there. And again, they're earrings. They're really cute. The other mini glasses I did slightly different. Ooh. They have just ice cubes in them. And yeah, I did them with gold and I made the bow gold as well. Whereas on that, I just left the bow the same colour as the rest of the glass. And I didn't top these with UV resin like I did that. I don't know if you can see the difference. So, yeah, they're earrings as well. The cones have turned out super cute. Look at them. Little mini Mouse cones. Again, earrings or a pendant. I think they've turned out super cute. Them in the summertime. They're just brill. I like them. And we have the Sprinkle Donut Mini or Mickey. Right? <laughs> I think they're really cute as well. Again, I would personally have that as a pendant rather than earrings. I think it's quite big, but they're very pretty. Now, when it comes to the love, with the mini head. How gorgeous is that? I really like it. But to make the earrings mirror images of each other, they've turned the writing round as well. And I get why they've done it, but I don't like it. <laughs> it just looks backwards. So you can see I've top coated this one and I didn't with that one because to me that's just going in the bin. That can't really do anything with that. Uh, yeah, so this on its own as a pendant, I thought would be fine, or a magnet. So I did top coat that one, but I'm not going to waste UV resin top coating this one. You can see the difference. And finally, these mini heads are supposed to be earrings as well, but as you can see, the hole for the pendants at the same side, for them to be proper earrings, that one should be there. So what I've decided is to make them pendants instead. Now, I've left that one blank. What I could do is do one of these the same as this and make it earrings. Look at the holographic um, colours. I like that. 
But with this one, what I did was I put a little mini tattoo on it. So you can see the difference. So you've got a Mickey one and a mini one. And yes, Serena, I reckon you're going to like that. <laughs> what do we think? Let me know. And the other thing that I did, I finally got round to pouring the Bearded Dragon. I got the mould ages ago from Timu, but I hadn't had a chance to actually pour it. And look, I put some little moss stuff inside it. The only thing is, the green for the bottom is way too lime green. Um, it didn't look that green in the cup. So, yeah, I'm not 100% happy with it, but I do like it. You can see his wee face there. And his paws and tail are dusted with some mica powder before pouring it. And there he is. I think he's really cute. I just coated him with um, UV resin as well because it was a matte mould. It was very matte and it wasn't nice. So, yay. I'll probably put that on Xana's Bavarian. We'll take it through soon and let, him, let us see what he thinks. <laughs> and finally, the egg mould that I had got from Timu for keeping your eggs in. Now, colour-wise, it's not great because I was basically just using it to use up spare resin just to see what it looked like. So colour-wise, it's not great, but the actual mould itself, I love Yay, so I'm definitely going to make more of these. Just handy so that I can keep boiled eggs in the fridge and know that they're boiled. And I want to keep one out on the worktop so that when I'm taking eggs out ready to use them, they're not rolling all over the worktop. They're sitting in one place. Yay. So, yeah, very multicoloured because it was just spare resin that I was using up. But I like it. So that's what I've been playing with the last wee while. Um, I've not really done much else. Oh, I need to go and sort of tumble dryer. Like I said, I'll show you when I'm going to... I've, I always tumble dry the sheets and pillowcases separate from the duvet cover because if I try to do them all together, it all just gets caught up in the duvet colour and it takes forever. Colour? Cover. So I've tumble dried the sheets and things, the sheet and pillowcases. I'm going to go and tumble dry the duvet cover and then I'll show you how I keep them together. And um, yeah, that's me. I might play with some silicon for the first time later. I got silicon ages ago to make my own moulds and haven't really been brave enough to try it. But I think I might give it a go. So, yeah. That might be what I'm up to later on today. Or I might leave it. It's getting on a bit. It's 10 to 12. When it gets to sort of lunchtime, I get tired and not able to concentrate. So I might leave it. What I might do, actually. Peep, peep, pups. Oh, by the way, I looked it up on the internet and apparently you pronounce that cloisonné. Cloisonné. <laughs> but, look at this. I started doing some crochet again yesterday. I've not done it since Christmas. And I am crocheting something for the lovely Yvonne, who is down under in the land of Oz. She wanted a pair of the elf mittens that I wore at Christmas. Now, I don't generally crochet for people because the wool gets covered in dog hair. <laughs> it's inevitable. There's nothing I can do to stop it. But I got this wool genie from Amazon and it definitely helps because the wool isn't rolling about on the floor or on the couch. It just sits on there and as I need it, it turns. It is so cool. So yeah, I might actually just do some more crochet this afternoon. I'll wait and see. I have heard from Brooke. Did, I don't know if I told you earlier. I don't think so. She phoned on Sunday night which I was surprised at because I'm like she doesn't normally phone for a good few days but she phoned on Sunday night and said that <laughs> the first thing she said was I've not done a very good job at keeping myself safe and I'm like what have you broken she went I fell and I went what did you break and she went nothing I just bruised my ego <laughs> I went all right okay because normally with her hyper mobility and stuff if she falls, she usually breaks bones. There was one time she fell. Um, it was actually Easter 2018. Was, we had just moved here. She fell and she landed on both ha hands like that and broke both her wrists at the same time. So, yeah, I thought, what have you broken? But she hadn't. Um, and then I messaged her again yesterday and said, you know, how are you getting on? And she phoned again. I'm like, my goodness. And yeah, she's doing great. She seems to be loving it, which is good. And um, they've had a lot of rain as well. 
she was showing me one of the big puddles that they need to go through. But yeah, she's having a ball, so that's good. Abby's good. She made cakes the other day, much to my disgust because they looked good. <laughs> I'll put a picture in. It was just Rice Krispie cakes that she made, but she used the mini egg bars. So it was chocolate and it had bits of mini egg through it. So she melted all that, then put the Rice Krispies in, and then she put little Milky Bar mini eggs on top, and they looked so good. But I resisted. I was a good girl. Um, so yeah, we're all doing good, that is all our news. I will come back to you later. Right, I have had a lovely couple of hours doing some crochet and I'm now in the utility room. I'm going to show you what I mean about keeping the duvet sets together. It's really simple, you probably already know it anyway. So, this is my duvet cover. It's not folded very neatly because try folding a super king size duvet cover when you're in a wheelchair. It's not easy, so it just gets bundled up into what looks like a little mound. <laughs> Here we've got our sheets and pillowcases. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the pillowcases that matches the duvet, so I know what set it is. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to put everything else on top of the duvet cover like that. I'm now going to take my pillowcase, turn it outside in, like this. I'm going to put my bundle ugh, on my knee. How am I going to show you this? Right, hopefully the dogs won't knock you over. So I've got the bundle on my knee. I'm going to take my outside in pillowcase. I'm going to put my hands in the corners, then I'm going to take the corner of my bundle and put it over. Like so. And there we have it. Flip over the flap like you would with a pillow. And there you have it. One duvet set, the sheet, the duvet cover, the pillow slips, and on the outside you can see what set it is by the pillow slip. So it makes it really easy to store and it's all together. No more hunting about trying to match up pillowcases and duvet covers and sheets. It's all there. Simple really. Anyway, I'm going to make my dinner now. Uh, come into the kitchen with me. So I'm going to be making burgers tonight, but a little bit different. So I've got a pack of Asda beef mince here. 20% fat. That's why I get the cheap stuff, because it's so hard to get 20% fat beef mince in Asda. And that's what I like. I don't like the less than 5% fat. So I've got this pack, 500 grams, less packaging. <laughs> And I'm just going to mix that with some garlic granules, onion powder and smoked paprika in a bowl. And uh, I'm going to fry them up. Well, I'm going to put them in a certain shape and fry them up and then I'll come back to you. So just to show you the egg holder works, look, yay! I've got two eggs there not rolling away from me. <laughs> now let's have a look at the burgers. The burger donuts. And the reason they're burger donuts is I'm going to crack an egg in each of the holes. So I'm going to have a burger and egg in one. That's the theory. I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> Whether it'll work with my cooking, I don't know, but we'll find out. So I'm just waiting for the meat to pretty much cook through and then I'll be adding my egg because I don't like my egg too cooked. Well, in true Fiona fashion, that was a fail. <laughs> the whole kind of closed in on itself a bit as it was cooking and I did try to stretch it but it wasn't working so that egg completely fell out of the hole. That egg, the yolk is sitting on top of the burger and the white is round about it. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to have burger and fried egg for dinner, which is essentially what it was going to be anyway. But um, yeah, I thought it was going to be nice and fancy. Next time I might just use the egg yolk because I'm not that keen on the white anyway. So if I just use the egg yolk, it will fit in the hole better. Well, not according to that one. But now I know to make the hole bigger. <laughs> So yeah, this is my dinner tonight. Just that, nothing else. Just that with some Redmond's Real Salt. Yum. 
Well, good evening. It is half past eight. I'm just giving the puppies their supper just now. Oh no, you can't see them. Um, I just wanted to come on and end the vlog. I got Brooke's phone sorted out. Yay! Um, they emailed me back. Mobile Phones Direct emailed me back. No attempt at making an excuse or anything. Just, okay, we've cancelled it. You'll get your refund within three to five working days. So, yep, yeah, in my opinion, nobody use Mobile Phones Direct. And I'll be thinking twice before using the AO again as well. But anyway, I managed to get her a different contract through Sky Mobile, which was good because we're with Sky anyway. Um, and we checked, oh, sorry, son. Sorry, puppy. We checked Sky Mobile runs on the O2 network and it's O2 that we all use. So we're very happy. It's not quite as good a deal, but it's no money up front, which is good because I would need to wait till I got the, the refund. Um, and it's a few pounds a month more, but yay. So that should be here tomorrow. So hopefully she will have a phone to come home to, which will be nice. Um, I've not heard from her again today. Oh no, I did actually. <laughs> she sent me a photo. I'll put it on the screen for you. I don't know what she was up to. I sent her a reply just for question marks and she said, I'm Santa. <laughs> don't know what they were up to. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's been a, a good crafty day for me and my dinner was nice as well, even if it was another fail. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. If so, please do. Hit the thumbs up button. Hugo, it's finished. Look at him still looking for more food. It takes a lot to fill a big doggy, doesn't it? There's none up there. <laughs> yeah, if you did, please do hit the thumbs up button. Talk to me in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in our next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.